Hi everyone, I'm so excited. I'm here with Tammy Carmody and tonight is this awesome lesson on painting spring flowers on, on the um, cute little terracotta pot that Tammy put together for us. And she also has a few little surprises up her sleeve too. So welcome Tammy, how are you this evening? I'm fine. Thanks, Debbie. And thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, this is going to be a fun, quick and easy class. You'll be in putting it on anything and everything you can find. And, it's and that's what Tammy is going to be showing you in a few seconds. What I'm going to do is always we want to give everyone a few minutes to find us. And I'm going to really quick go in and try to put the link into events because so many of you go there. And we also know that um, Facebook has algorithms. So sometimes even I, when I'm searching for the, my live post, I can't find them either. So if you struggle sometimes finding these live classes, you're not alone. Even I have a, a difficult time. So Tammy, I'm going to spotlight you. And if you would like to show them a little special um, something that you have to show them, Sure. Um, and then I'm going to go do this. Okay. Well, um, as most of you know, I am a glass painter. I paint on everything, but I mostly paint glass. And Debbie had sent me over a little message um, several weeks ago and said, have I ever heard of OUI yogurt? And I said, no, but I'm going to go to the grocery store and I could find it. Well, somebody had posted on, on the site that they love these little jars. So this is the yogurt in the grocery store. And so I bought it and brought it home, bought several flavors. My husband eats all the yogurt. He says it's really good, but look how cute the jar is when all said and done. When you're done with it, just clean it and get the label off. Well, today, Debbie was talking about how she would love this piece um, on her picnic table outside. And she was going to do um, some different things with the pot to go with it. Some chargers and some different things. So I thought what we would do today also I'm going to show you is I am going to paint um, one of these jars along with the pot so that you can see. And we're gonna paint all these nice cute little flowers and you can put a candle in here. You could put a tea light in here. Um, you could even put some fairy lights, whatever you like. And wouldn't this just be the most cutest thing on your outside table um, for the summer, especially if you're having a picnic or you're having people over for Mother's Day, um, it would just brighten up. So um, all you have to do is this yogurt just has a paper top on it. So once you pull that off, the cup is ready to go. And um, I'm gonna paint it in multi-surface paints, the same thing that we're gonna do the um, pot in. And um, you can just let it dry on its own because it's not really something that you're gonna wash and it will probably sit long enough and you put a candle in it and it'll be perfect for that patio table or um, maybe outside by a little side table. So I'm gonna paint that too. So. Um, I hope all you guys get excited about it and go and buy some yogurt and paint this design on this too. Okay, whenever you're ready to um, okay, cover and so Debbie. What I'm going to do is I know that we have some, um, hang on, I will come back on and um, what we have is Facebook has added closed captioning and I know that it is right in the middle of our hands. So when Tammy gets started, I'm going to remove that. So you're not looking at that text because it's very distracting. Um, Cause as I'm talking, even now I'm seeing it. Um, we have about 280 people signed up. And so I wanna give everyone a few more minutes to find us so far. Oh, you know what? Everyone's asking how they can get the e-packet. Multiple people have asked. So would you like to explain how they can get that? And then I'll type it in. Sure. Um, if you go to my website, wisteriapainting.com, and if you go to the tab that says pattern packets, 
So you go to that and it should be at the very bottom because it's the most latest one that I have um, put on here. So go to the bottom and you'll see where it says springtime pattern packet. You click on it. It'll ask you to pay $6. Once you pay, you can download it automatically right to your computer. And from your computer, you can print it out on your printer. All right, we still have a lot of people coming in a, a little bit late. And um, I'm gonna spotlight your hands, Tammy. And why don't you go ahead and show them the um, project and um, then we'll get going in a few more minutes. Okay, great. So what we're gonna do today is we're basically going to paint the front part um, of the pot. But my pot is painted all the way around okay so if you're a fast painter you can just keep going all the way around that pot as we're going don't stop because i've stopped um, if you're a slower painter just take your time and um, put the pieces on um, as you go there's no hurry you can always um, continue it a little bit later um, the piece itself is painted in multi-surface paint and the reason I use that is it holds up really, really good to outside. Um, it doesn't fade, it, um, it holds up really, really well. But if you don't have multi-surface paints, and I use Folk Art. So the brand of paint that I use is Folk Art Multi-Surface. And if you don't have these paints, you can paint it in acrylics. The only thing that you have to do when we're all done painting is you will spray it with a spray varnish. That'll just protect it um, so that you can use it um, outside and it'll hold up just fine in the heat. And if you choose to put a plant in it. Um, so don't feel you have to use multi-surface. Now, if you're looking for the place to buy multi-surface paints, um, Walmart carries it, Joann's carries it, uh, Hobby Lobby and Michael's. So, and if you can't find folk art, you're more than welcome to use deco art. Either brand is um, equally as good. I just like um, folk art because I like the consistency of it. It's a little bit thicker and a little bit creamier. And with my style of painting, which I do a lot of stroke work when I paint my flowers, I like my piece to look opaque. So that's the reason I use folk art um, products most of the time. And Tammy, we have a few questions. Sure. Um, as people are still finding us, um, when you prepped the yogurt jar, what did you do to prep it? Um, all you need to do is after you eat your yogurt, you need to take the, um, the sticker off. So make sure that you remove the sticker and then you might get a little residue of glue. So then what I did is I took some rubbing alcohol onto a paper towel and just wipe the whole thing um, with rubbing alcohol. Now, we are going to sponge it green exactly like how we're going to sponge the um, pot green. So everything we do on the pot, you're going to do exactly the same thing on the jar. Nothing special other than to get the label off and to use rubbing alcohol just to clean the surface to get any of the stickiness from the sticker off. And was it difficult to remove the the um, label from the jar? No, it's actually very easy, very easy. And did you just use hot water? Just use hot it? water, peeled it off, and then I stuck the jar in my um, dishwasher and washed it through the dishwasher also. Okay, and then your one green, someone was asking, oh, I'm trying to find it. Sorry guys, I'm looking through all the questions really fast. Oh, soft apple, is there a substitute um, soft apple is the color that I did the rim. So you can use any color there. If you want blue, you want pink, you want yellow. Um, you could also take um, the um, fresh cut grass and add white to it to tone it down. And that will give you pretty much the same tone as the soft apple. Here is the soft apple. I'll put it up so you can kind of see the tone of it. It's a really light, light green. So if you were to take the fresh cut grass and add white to it, you would be able to get that same value of color. But you don't have to. Um, 
use that. Uh, you can do the rim of your um, pot in any color you like. We will use it for the um, daffodils, or I'm sorry, the Queen Anne's lace right here. So if you don't have this color, just mix the cut green grass and add a little bit of white to it just to get a softer green. And if you don't have multi-surface paints, would you recommend using regular acrylics or yes. do they not adhere well? No, you can use regular acrylics. Regular acrylics is fine. The only thing that you need to do when you're done painting is you need to spray the surface with either a matte spray, satin spray, whatever you may have, just to protect that surface. So that if you are using it as a pot that might get water from your hose, um, it doesn't wash the paint off. So you need something to seal it, but you're, you can paint this exact piece in acrylic, no problem. It just needs to have a coat of varnish over the top. You could do paint on varnish also. Um, it's just easier to usually spray it though. And I just use Krylon matte or satin when I do this. Wonderful. Well, we've got about 125 people, so I think we'll go ahead and get going. Okay. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is you need to make sure that you have wiped your surface. Just take a paper towel and a little bit of water and wipe the surface. So in case there's any oils or if you have lotion on your hands or anything like that, you don't have any sticky, any spots that the paint might reject. Okay. Um, the first color you're going to get out is Thicket which is a dark green. If you don't have thicket, you can use any dark green that you may use. If you're doing um, uh, acrylics, plantation pine, um, anything in that value, you just need a dark green. And then we also need to get out a uh, fresh cut grass, which is a medium value green. So you just wanna put a little bit of both of these colors onto your palette. Now, before we do the painting of the flowers, we have to give the background some kind of sur a surface or a look so that our flowers pop out. So what I use is I use one of these um, little round sponges. You can find them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. Um, they usually come to in a um, container. If you don't have that, you can use a sea sponge. You can tell mine's very worn out, but you could use that. If you don't have a sponge at all, if you have something you can stipple with, so say a deer foot or a stipple brush, just something rough so that when you're pouncing up and down, you're going to be able to put that paint on. A sponge is going to cover the surface much quicker. That's why I use it. So the first thing you're going to do before you um, start painting is you need to get the sponge wet. So you're gonna get the sponge wet and you're gonna wring out all the water in the sponge. Then you're going to take a dry paper towel with your sponge and you're going to squeeze all that excess water. We want the sponge to be damp, but we don't want excess water. Once you do that, what I do with my sponge is I take it and I squeeze it so that I kind of get a rounded surface here, okay? I'm going to go into my thicket paint and then I'm going to go onto my palette and I'm going to pounce it up and down. So I'm working that paint into that sponge. Then I twirl it. I twirl, twirl, twirl in a circle. Okay. That puts that paint right really nice up into that sponge. So when you start stippling, so you can see how nice and light it is, it's not heavy and you don't get big clumps or circles in your piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sponge this pot all the way around. We're going to start at the bottom of the pot and we're gonna sponge up about three quarters of the way up. Now, when you get up here to the top, we don't want a straight line, we want some valleys. So as you're sponging, as you get up, you're gonna do highs and lows, highs and lows. So let's first start at the bottom and we're gonna start sponging on the green paint. And I'm coming up about three quarters of the way. And I'm going to turn my sponge and I'm going to get some highs and lows up at the top because I don't want a straight line. And we're going to put this all the way around. Okay, I'm only going to do half of my pot because otherwise I will have 
paint all over my table here since I've got to um, lay it on its side so you guys can see. And we have a question. Sure. Um, Mary Jo wants to know if you prepped with any multi-purpose sealer. No, just straight on the pot. Wow, okay. Straight on the pot. Great question, Mary Jo. Now, if you're a little worried um, about the paint, the, when, if you have water going into the pot from a plant, um, you very easily could spray um, varnish inside the pot or do paint on varnish inside the pot. And then that will keep that moisture coming through to the outside. So you're gonna get this all the way around and I'll give you a minute or so to do that. Remember to get your highs and lows so that you don't have just a straight line across the top. And you want it to be um, pretty solid. It's okay if a little bit of the pot is showing through. Once you get that all the way around, the next color we're going to use is the fresh cut grass. You could use Hauser medium green, Hauser light green. Any medium green would work great. Now what I do, as you can see, my sponge is really dark and dirty. I just pick a new side, squeeze it, go into my light paint and do the same thing. Go into the paint, pounce up, up, up and down onto your palette, twirl that sponge round and round and round, get that paint good into that sponge. That way you don't get any heavy big circles. Now, this is going to be towards the top of our dark green. We're gonna just get kind of a little bit of a medium value towards the top. So you're gonna start at the top, and you're gonna bring the color down. And as you come down, you wanna sponge a little bit lighter. So you're actually fading that color into the dark. So we just wanna get some highlights across the top of a little bit more green. So everything just doesn't look all the same. And we're gonna do this all the way around, pouncing very lightly. Now, if you're getting circles, that means you're pouncing too hard with that sponge. Use a very, very light touch. So you're basically just getting a little bit of texture onto that piece. Now, for all of you who've never painted with me before and have never painted flowers, I find it's much easier to paint freehand than it is to actually put a pattern on. And the reason is, is it's your garden. So you can go as light as you want, as heavy as you want. You could add as many daisies, roses, lilacs, Queen's Anne's lace. It's your garden, so you paint your garden. Don't feel because my pattern has three or four on it that you have to get all three or four on. If you want six, that's fine also, okay? It's your garden, you paint it the way you like. If you wanna change a color of something, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and not everything when I'm painting is all straight up and down in a line. So we're gonna put certain things on and then we'll put the next item on. But as we start moving forward on our piece, we're going to be overlapping. So if you've put lilacs on and then you go to put a daisy on and those daisy petals are going to interfere with the lilac. Don't worry about it. Go right over the top of the lilac. It looks more realistic when things overlap on top of each other instead of all in a straight line. Okay. And Tammy, we have a question. As you put in the two different color greens, was the first color pretty much dry before you added the second one or were you blending the two colors together? Um, it does not need to be dry. It, um, this paint dries really fast pretty fast, just like acrylic. So it doesn't have to be. If it's a little damp, it's okay because you're just going to blend the colors together. Okay. 
Thank you. When you're done with the sponge, go ahead and just put it in your water. Um, you can wash it out later when you're all done painting, but we are done with the sponge. I love how soft that turned out. Thank you. And, and the key is when you're sponging is um, find a sponge that you like. Some sponges have big holes, some have little holes. Um, it just depends on what you like. I like these round sponges because they don't have big holes in them. And if you tap lightly, you get it to look very nice and lacy. You don't get big bubbles. If you're getting those big bubbles and big round splotches, you haven't worked that paint in that sponge enough. And then when you tap, you need to tap very, very lightly. That's what gives you that real nice soft look when sponging. Okay, the next color, we're going to first start with um, our queens and lace. So our first color we're going to get out is going to be um, soft apple. Now, some people said that they couldn't find soft apple. So if that's the case, um, just take... Uh, fresh cut grass and add some white to it and mix those two colors together and that will give you a soft apple. Soft apple is a very, very pale, pale green. So we're going to take soft apple and a little bit of our medium, medium blue and we're going to mix those two colors together on our palette. Not too much blue. We don't want the color to be too blue, just a little bit to give it kind of a hint of a light, light blue. And I don't have a palette knife, so I'm just going to use the handle end of my brush. I'm so gonna... glad you're you showing people how to do that. Um, so many people always use their brush hairs and explain why you use the, instead of a pellet knife, you use the hard end of the brush. Um, the reason that you don't want to use the hairs of the brush is because when you're mixing, if the paint gets down in here where the ferrule is of the brush and it dries in there, you'll never get it out. And this is a lot of paint that we're mixing up. So we don't want to do that. So if you don't have a pellet knife, I own one but it's on my other painting table. So um, I just use the handle end of my brush. I, I use my handle end of my brushes almost all the time. So that's why my brushes are very grungy. They're not very clean. Like you can see this one, you see how much color's on there? That's because I'm always mixing with the handle end of my brush. Okay, so for the Queen's Anne's Lace, we, um, you can use any brush that you want. You can use a filbert, you can use a round. What we're gonna be putting on is the little triangle shape. So if you look at your line drawing, you all should have a line drawing. If you look at your line drawing, you're going to see here this little triangle that's right in here, not this top part, just this where this heavy line is. We're gonna be putting that shape in. So I would suggest that you work on one half of your piece and then as you go along, if you're a fast painter, you can roll your pot and continue. Otherwise, just work on one side and then you can always come back and do it. Now I have about four on my front side. So I'm, going, I'm using a filbert brush and I'm gonna come in and I am just going to paint a triangle shape. You could do big, you can do small. They don't all have to be the same. Well, we end up putting another coat on here. So put one coat on let it dry, move to another location. And it's okay if they turn, they don't have to be straight up and down. Have them turning so it looks like the wind's kind of blowing them um, different directions while they're growing in our garden. Nothing paints, nothing grows straight up and down. And Tammy, can you repeat what um, brush you're using? I'm using a um, filbert brush. So a two, a four, you can use a two round, a three round, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, my piece is gonna have a bumblebee right in here. So I don't want, I'm gonna kind of leave that spot open to put that bumblebee. 
So make sure as you're putting these on, you don't get too many. Leave a little spot to get your B in there. So I'm going to put one in here. So it looks like when I put my B on, it's flying towards that flower. And maybe one up here a little higher. Once you get these on, we're going to let them dry. We'll give them a minute or two. And then we're going to come back and put a second coat. Um, I don't know about you ladies, but I like things to look opaque. I don't like things to look sheer. Um, so I always put more coats on than most people do. So I'm definitely going to need a second coat. So we're just going to let that dry a minute and then we will um, come back to that. Um, so I'll give you a minute to go ahead and get those base coated um, on. Oh, and we're going to do our little uh, our little jar here because we I want to show you what this is going to look like when it's all done. Now, when painting on glass, I suggest that you use the softest brush possible when base coating. Because the glass is so slick, um, it takes, it, it doesn't go on very opaque the very first time. So we're going to just put one. So you want to use a very soft, soft brush when painting on glass when you're base coating. I use Dynasty glass art brushes and they're um, they're made by Dynasty. They can be found on um, Jilly Bean's website. She carries them all. I also carry them on my um, Etsy site. So if you're looking, you can find them there also. Okay, and maybe we'll stick one a little bit farther down, right in here. So because we're on a smaller surface here, we're just going to just paint smaller triangles. And I'll put one over, over here. Okay, once you get that on, I think this paint should probably be dry enough that you can get a second coat. So go ahead and put a second coat on your pot. Um, the multi-surface paints do not really take that long to dry. Um, that's why I like to use them, especially when I have to base coat because they cover really nice. If you were using enamels, enamels is great for glass, um, but it does take a lot longer to dry. And so you need to paint several things at one time just to be able to give the drying time when painting on glass. Okay, so we get a second coat on. This is looking good. We won't have to put a third on. Then while that's drying, what we're going to go to next is we're going to move on to our lilac shapes. So the color you need to get out is violet pansy or some form of a dark purple. Some dark purple. And you're going to need a filbert brush. So if you have a two filbert, a four filbert, if you don't have a filbert, you can use a round and you can achieve the same thing with a round brush. It just goes on a little bit nicer when you're using um, a filbert. A filbert brush is a flat brush with a rounded tip. And I paint almost every single flower that I paint with this brush. This is my go-to brush. This, a liner brush, and a four flat. I can paint everything with just those three brushes. So if you don't have one, I would suggest maybe getting one and try painting with it because you'll be so happy with the end results using a filbert brush. So why these Queen Anne lace are drying the centers, we're going to get the shape of our lilacs on next. So if you look at your pattern, they are going to be these ones. They look kind of cone shaped, okay? Now remember, don't get too many because you have to have openings for your roses. Your daisies are kind of down at the bottom. 
but they're going to be tall and they're not going to be as tall as the queen ants lace. So make sure that you drop them down slightly. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into the violet pansy paint, work that paint into your brush, and we're going to put the shape, the cone shape on. And how I do this is I take my brush, I start at the bottom of the flower and work my way up. And all I'm doing is tapping little strokes, tapping, 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 tapping. And as I come up, see how they get skinnier and they're wider down here at the bottom. If they're not wide enough, you can just come in and tap a little bit more width. If you keep them kind of lacy on the edges, they're going to look a little bit more real, um, look more real than they would if they, if you didn't have this little laciness. So go ahead and put on about five or six of them. Now remember to keep this spot empty because you're gonna have a bumblebee in there. And then also don't forget to um, bring them down a little bit. So not all of them all have to be in a line. Bring them down a little bit. And then I'm going to add some right over in here where my next grouping is. And I'll drop down and pull one up right in here. Now these will take a few minutes to dry. The next color you're going to get out is baby pink. If you don't have baby pink, any color pink will work. Um, we're just going to put our circles on where our roses are going to go. We're kind of laying out our landscape here. We're going to be landscape architects right now and kind of laying out where we want um, all our flowers to go. So once you um, get that color out, again, if you get your pattern out and you look, I only have it in two spots on the front. So we're gonna come right in here where our bumblebee's gonna be. And I have a little bit down here. Now, if you like roses, feel free to add more. You, like I said, it's your garden. You let it grow the way you want. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the roses, all we're gonna be doing is painting circles. And when you put them on, you're going to start fatter at the bottom and a little bit smaller as you go up towards the top. So I'm going to put one right here and I'm going to put another one right next to it because you got to think of them. They're growing on a bush and we just don't want them straight up and down. And then I'll put one in the middle right here. and one up here at the top. And then I think I might put some down here towards the bottom. Now, don't put too many because we have daisies to go down here at the bottom. We have um, little blue um, flowers that need to go at the bottom. Um, I'm going to show you my piece here, my finished piece. As I turned my piece, I did put a big, um, a big bush of roses on that side as I went around. Here's the side that I'm working on now. So you can determine 
where you would like your, and I also did another big grouping on this back side. So you can determine how many um, bushes of flowers you would like um, on your piece. The next color you're gonna get out is white. And you need something to stipple with. So if that be a stipple brush, an old grungy brush, a Debbie Mitchell brush, just something that you can add a little stippling on. We're gonna go back to the Queen's Anne's Lace. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little stippling across the top. So take your brush, pounce it out onto your palette paper, and then pounce it out onto a dry paper towel. And we just want this to be light and airy. We don't want this to be too dark. And at the top of the Queen's Anne's Lace, we are going to, let me get the pattern here and show you one more time. Oh, where'd my pattern go? So now, do you see this area on the pattern that's above that triangle? That is what we're going to be stippling in now. So with that stipple brush, you're gonna come in and very, very lightly, you're gonna stipple the top of this flower and kind of round it and come. Very, very lightly. And you're gonna do this with white. Make sure you pounce onto your palette paper, pounce up and down on a dry paper towel so that you get it light and airy. And you're gonna pounce on this light and lacy top to this flower. Tammy, I just wanted to let you know, everyone is loving this. Oh, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're gonna even love it more when it's all done. I love the Queen Anne's lace and the roses the best. <laughs> and the really like is, is you have such a variety of flowers on here. So much fun, so much to learn. Well, thank you. I tried to put a little bit of everything so that you just didn't have one thing. Okay, so now um, once you get done stippling that very, very, very softly, um, we're going to go into, um, we're going to get a liner brush. So that will be the next thing that we're going to get. Now, remember, we're going to do some liner work on these flowers. And when you do liner work, sometimes you need to add a little bit of water to your paint to get it to flow. So if you do just add very, very little, it doesn't take much. And we're gonna be using um, fresh cut grass and the um, soft apple. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go in to the soft apple. Now that's not the mix, this is just straight soft apple. It's that really light, light color, light green. And we are gonna put our stamen lines inside of these triangles here. And hopefully you're gonna be able to see it on this camera, but I have about five in each one. And I add, at an angle coming from the top, pulling down to that triangle of your flower, you're gonna pull five stamen lines up in each one of these sections. Now, 
we're going to add a little bit of dark green on top of these. So that will really make them pop here in a minute. It's very light to begin with. That's why we had to add the blue to the original base color so that these light colors would show up. I just love to paint flowers. And I don't know how many of you way back in the day remember Roz Stillcuff. Um, she made many, many, many books of flowers. And I studied her books nonstop to learn how to paint flowers. And um, so I have to say that most of my inspiration comes from her books because I just love, um, love to paint flowers. I recently had to paint for a customer some hibiscus and I don't normally paint that. Well, sure enough, I went searching through her books and I found one and painted it for a customer on a glass jar that was gonna be a solar jar that lit up at night. And um, they turned out really, really good. So if you're ever wanting to paint flowers and you're not really sure where, sure where to look, always go to her books if you have them. They're great reference books. Okay, why that dries, what I would like to do is go to our lilacs now and put our second coat on. So you need to get out your filbert brush. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this white and just pull a puddle over here by my purple. If everybody can see that. I'm now gonna load my brush into my purple, mix a little white off to the side so you're kind of getting a medium value purple. And what we're gonna do is we're going to paint some flowers on top of this dark purple that we already did. But I wanna show you what I want you to, it to look like. So at the bottom of the page, we want to do, I'm gonna do it in dark, but you're gonna do it in medium. You're gonna turn your brush, turn your filbert brush on its side. That way it becomes small. And you're going to be putting four petal flowers. So this is going to be a big version, so you can see. So we've got four petal flowers at the base. As we come up, we still might be able to put four petal flowers. But as we gradually go up, you can put two, threes, twos, and one. And all of this is in that shape that you originally put on. Now, once you put that on, if you have extra space out over in here, what you can do is just come in and tap a few little flowers. This makes it lacy and airy and you just don't get a little straight up and down, okay? So let me go back to my pot here. And again, it's gonna be violet pansy with a little bit of white. Mixing, just mix it on your palette. And now we're gonna start at the bottom of the flower and we're gonna put four petal flowers. And as we come up, I'm not gonna be able to fit any more four petal flowers. So I might just need to do three, two, and one. If it looks kind of funny over here, you can always add one or two to lace it up. But what I want you to look at is you are not covering your first value of color that you've put on. You want to be able to see the dark and the light. Okay, so when you paint these lilacs, make sure that you're not covering up your first color. And you first are gonna tap on four petals, two singles to one. You need to lace, get it a little lacy, just add a few more strokes off to the side. So this is violet pansy plus white using your filbert. If you don't have a filbert brush, you can also achieve this using a round brush. What I'd like you to do on your round brush is when you load into your paint, push on it a few times and try to flatten out that tip. Kind of make it a little bit more blunt. Now, once you get this on, we're gonna to have to let it dry because we do have one more coat layer 
on our lilacs that will go on top of this. The next color you're going to get out is magenta. And we're going to put our centers of our roses in. Um, you only, um, you can just take your liner brush and all it is is a sit down. So load up your liner brush with quite a bit of paint. You're going to come to your rose and at the very top of your rose, slightly down, you're going to put an oval straight at the top and this is a sit down if you want your rose to turn a little bit it can go off to the side but we need to put these on and let them dry so that we can do the next step everybody doing okay so far yes we don't have any more questions if you have been questions that you've already answered. And so I'm just answering for you. Perfect. I know the answer. Once you get the center of your roses done, we're going to go back up to the Queen Anne's lace and these very light green lines we put in, they need a little bit more um, depth to them. So you can go into your medium green, even your dark green, and what I did is I just lightly added another stroke right on the top. Try to do it really thin so you're not covering up all that light green that you put on. So very lightly. Everybody doing okay so far? I don't want to go too fast. I paint so many of these flowers. I can paint them in my sleep, I think. What I really like about these is how versatile they are because while you're painting on a pot, like I said, I thought it would be fun to put these on placements and other items for my backyard. Um, but then you, I remember taking a little class in your booth using some of these similar flowers, making little necklaces. So, I mean, with these type of flowers, you can do everything. You can make gifts. Um, like look at the little votive glass that uh, Tammy's doing. It's amazing. I almost forgot about this. I thought, oh, I better get moving. So this is what I've gotten base coated in on the little votive. And you're just going to repeat what you've done on everything else. You're going to paint it exactly like um, uh, exactly like the pot. Okay. So since I forgot about it, I'm going to have to give it a minute to dry and then I'll catch it up. Okay. While we're waiting, let's go back up to the Queen's Anne's Lace. Um, what you might want to do now, since you've got the greens out on your palette, is they are connected with a stem. So with a liner brush, it doesn't make a difference what color greens you use, but you need to add a stem and just bring them down into your dark green into your garden. We're going to have a lot of leaves, a lot of different 
things in here. So just have them, as I say, nothing grows in midair. So you need to connect everything with a stem. You can also do the same thing with the lilacs, add a little stem from them, bring them down using the different greens in your palette. That's thicket, the uh, fresh cut grass, the apple green, but just have everything start coming down towards the bottom. Your roses also should have a stem connecting them. And it's okay to use a dirty brush. Just pick up a little of this, a little of that. So you get all the different values. Okay, once you're done um, with that, we are going to move back to the Queen's Anne's Lace. Now, what we're going to do to finish that is you've pulled a stem, and now you need to have a little, it has a little uh, calyxes coming off the side. So right where you connected that stem, you can add a little dropping down calyx on each one. Again, you can use whichever color green you want. Um, I use the light colors on mine because that's what showed up the best on my piece. And to finish those Queen Anne lace off, what we're going to do is we're going to take a round brush, maybe a little bit bigger than your liner brush if you have one. If not, the liner will work just fine. We are going to tap on dots at the top. So I'm going to bring this in here to show you. What we're going to be doing is this whole section here that you stippled in has a whole bunch of little dots and you just tap it on with your liner brush. This way, they're not perfectly round. They're different shapes. They're different sizes. We're going to add this little lacy section right across the top of this flower, just tapping on in white paint. Reload whenever you run out, different sizes, different shapes. Also bring the dots down onto your green. Texture is good, so the more paint you have on the brush, the more texture there will be. And you're gonna do this to all your Queen Anne's lace. And then this flower will be done. And see how quick and easy and simple it is? Make sure you bring some dots down onto that green area. Again, texture is okay. So the more paint you have on the brush, the more texture you'll have and the nicer it'll look. Now, if you're going to give this to mom for Mother's Day, um, what I would do in the next few days, if you have sunshine where you live, set it out in the sun. Let the sun uh, dry it. Because this paint, actually it says it takes 21 days to dry. But in this case, because it's decorative, we really don't need to. If you... Um, are worried about it, I would let it, put it out in the sun, let the sun dry it. Here in California, I think our weather is about 90 degrees here today. We're having a heat spell, but it's gonna start cooling down a little bit tomorrow. Just set it in the sun and then um, spray it with a spray varnish. 
It wouldn't hurt to spray the inside too, especially if you're going to have a pot where the moisture might be coming through or you are going to just plant a plant in it. If you're going to put a pot in a pot, um, you'll be fine. It won't bother it. So you're going to add all those dots. Just let your garden grow. Like I said, when you're painting it, you can add as many of these as you like, as many lilacs as you like, as many roses as you like. It's your garden. You plant it and paint it the way you choose. All right, when you're done with that, we're going to go back to the lilacs. And we're going to put our last layer on. And the last layer of paint is done with pure white, just regular white paint. I'm going to let me get my little purple on this little glass right here. So you guys will be able to see this when it's all done. Remember, you can use the same brushes doing the smallest thing you just barely touch. Okay, so back to our lilacs. We're going to put the last layer on and it's just going to be regular white. And there's no right and wrong where you put it on. You just want to get some dimension. So when you come on, don't put them exactly on top of what you've already put on. Just add four petal flowers down at the base where it's fatter as you work your way up. You can do twos, threes, ones, and put the last layer onto these lilacs. Tammy, would you advise he's heat setting the glass jar? Um, if it's just going to be sitting on the table and there's a candle in it, it will be fine because it'll cure on its own. Um, but if you are thinking you're going to maybe use it for a vase or something that water is involved in it, then I would definitely heat set it. And you just stick it into your oven, set your oven to 350 degrees, bake it for 30 minutes, and that will cure that paint so that you don't have to wait the 21 days. This paint dries to the touch pretty fast. It just doesn't totally cure um, really fast, even though you can touch it and move it. The problem is it's when you add water to things, that's when the paint will come off. So that's why we don't use acrylics when we paint on glass because it goes on beautifully. But as soon as you um, add any form of water to it, it'll wash right off and you've done all that work for nothing. So that's why I always tell people, if you're going to paint on glass, make sure that you use multi-surface paints or glass enamels. The difference between multi-surface and the glass enamels is the sheen. So acrylics is a matte finish. That's why we always um, varnish everything when we're done painting on wood to give it that nice shine. Multi-surface has a satin finish to it. So you don't really have to varnish. You can just go straight paint and be done with it. And then gloss enamels are shiny. They are high, high gloss. And that's why they look so good on glass because they have that high shine to them. Okay, what we're gonna do next is we need to get the center of our daisies on. So you need to get out some lemon custard any yellow will work. If you don't have lemon custard, any yellow paint will work. And you're going to be using a round brush. And with that round brush, we're going to put the center of the daisies on. 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a sit down. So you are gonna load that brush into the paint and then you're gonna hold your brush sideways. You're not gonna go straight up and down like this because that's gonna give you a dot. You're gonna actually hold the brush sideways so that you get an oval. We want ovals, we don't want dots. So what you're gonna do is decide where you want your daisies to go. Now, if you look at your pattern, you can see where I've put them. So I'm gonna put one right here. And I think I'll stick one maybe up in here. Just set it down and lift up. One down here. One up here and one over here. Now, if you see, I've kind of turned my um, centers different direction because I want my daisies to grow different directions. I don't want my daisies to all be straight up and down. So take those ovals and just turn them different directions. So we're gonna put those on and we're gonna have to let them dry a minute or so before we can move on. As you guys can see, I'm painting this jar and I'm still using my number two filbert, but I'm barely using the tip of the brush to paint these lilacs really small. So remember, you can use the same brushes that you have. You just do very little pressure. Just use the tip. You're basically just feathering on that stroke. Most of these stems you put on are going to disappear because we're going to fill in with all the leaves and the flowers. But it kind of gives you a little direction when painting. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our roses. So you're going to need out some magenta and some white and a round brush. So if you have um, a number one, a two, a three, um, that works the best. And I'm gonna get my paper plate up here and I'm gonna show you how you're gonna put these strokes on, okay? So you have an idea. So here is our rose. And here is our center that we've put in, okay? So now what you're going to do is you're gonna load the brush in the magenta and pick up some white. So you've got a double loaded brush, magenta plus white. When we start painting the roses, we're going to start at the top and we're gonna be doing comma strokes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the brush, you're gonna set it down, push it down, Pull it around and lift. And you're gonna be doing the same thing on the other side. Set it down, pull it around and lift. And this is where your center is, right here, okay? So you have two comma strokes. Now we're gonna complete that circle with four more comma strokes. So you're gonna be on the outside of your circle. You're gonna set the brush down and you're gonna come across halfway, maybe a little bit more. You're gonna go the outside of the circle on the right, push, pull, lift, and pull that stroke. Come back to the left, push, pull, lift. Come to the outside of the right, push, pull, lift. And to finish off that rose, you're gonna have a little comma right at the bottom. So can everybody see that? So you're gonna put 
load in the magenta, tip into the white. You're gonna do a comma around your dot on the left and on the right. Then on the outside of your circle, you're gonna pull a comma from the left halfway across, comma on your right halfway across or more, the left again, the right again, and a little one in the middle. So I'm gonna do it on my circle here so that you can see it. So I'm here's my circle. I'm gonna set it down, pull, and come around. Now I'm gonna to go to the right, set it down, pull, and come around. Now I'm gonna start on the outside of that circle, where that circle is. I'm gonna to come to the outside of the circle. I'm gonna push, pull, and lift halfway across. To the right, push, pull, and lift and come across, back to the left, push, pull, and lift, push, pull, and lift. So you can see how I basically have covered up that circle that I had painted on my plate here. And then the very last stroke you have is right here at the bottom, and it's just one little comma stroke right at the bottom. Now, if they're too pink or they're too white, just pick up a little bit more color of whichever one you want um, to do your roses. If they're too pink for you, add more white. If they're too white, pick up a little bit more pink. So now you're going to do this on all of those roses that you've put on the front of your piece. Now, when you're doing this, try not to get your hand into your yellow dots. Try to be a little careful. If you do, it's okay. We'll just put them back on. That's one good thing about this. And I usually only do two strokes and I reload. And if I don't get enough color, I just pick up a little bit and restroke right over the top. So I always go to the left, the right, and then I go back left, right. I just continue, reload, put two strokes on. And these are just the cutest little roses. You can put them on anything and everything and they're quick and easy. If you want different color roses, you like yellow roses or you like purple roses, whatever color you like, just make sure that you have three values of color when painting them. So what are you thinking so far, Debbie? Pretty easy, huh? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Oh, that's I okay. So. I'm just loving it. I mean, I'm seeing this on so many different things. You need a quick gift. So easy to just find any surface that you might have and to paint this on because it's really quick and easy. It doesn't take a long time to do it either. That's what's nice about it. You get something fast done. I like how you're showing it on the candle holder, which was a yogurt jar because they're a little bit smaller. Yeah, so all I did here is I just did everything half the size because it's so small. So you just have to remember, depending on what you're painting on, you can do the same thing. If it's something small like this, just reduce the size. If you're painting a bigger pot, just paint the pattern um, and the flowers just, Get the sizes just 
raise them up a little bit. That's all you got to do. And what's great about these yogurts is the jar is so cute. It has a nice lip right here. You don't have to, it's finished off. It's like it was meant to be. And they taste good too. So it's a double whammy for us. And we're not sure how to pronounce it. We don't know if it's O-I, O-U. So we're, I'm just calling it O-U-I yogurt. And they have so many different flavors and they're really good too. So it's not like the flavor is bad either. It's all a win-win situation for us painters here. Okay, once we get done with these roses, we're now going to be going to our daisies. And um, so you need to get out some fresh white paint if you don't have it, because you can see mine here has a lot of pink in it from picking up my, uh, for my roses. So you need to get some fresh paint. And before we start, I'm going to show you how to paint these daisies to make them really easy for you. Okay, you're going to be using your number two filbert. If you're painting something bigger and you want um, bigger daisies, then just jump up to a four. You can go up to um, a bigger size. I'm going to paint them so that you can see them here in the camera a little better on my paper plate um, in pink, just for demonstration. But when you go onto your piece, please do white, not pink. Okay, so now when you paint your daisies, I use the side of my brush. I never use the flat of my brush because the flat of it just gets them a little bit too big for me. So I tend to use the side of the brush. So you're gonna load into the paint and we're going to paint the daisy like we're painting a clock. And we're going to be painting comma strokes. So the very first stroke, if this is my daisy and my flower is going straight up and down, I'm going to pull a comma stroke right at 12 o'clock. Okay? And to paint a comma, what you're doing is you're taking that brush, push, pull, and lift, and bring it up on that tip. And if you're new, if you're a brand new painter, this might be something you might need to practice a little. And once you get the hang of it, it comes to you very easy without even thinking about it. So once you put your 12 o'clock on, we're then going to do a stroke at nine o'clock and one at three o'clock. Nine o'clock and three o'clock. Okay, now this is where it's very important that you're on the side of your brush. If you use the flat of your brush, your strokes might be too fat and you will not be able to get enough stroke in there. So you're gonna load up into your white paint and you're gonna use the side of the brush and wherever you put these strokes, you're gonna put two in between. So you're gonna put two strokes here, two strokes here, it doesn't make a difference if they're the same length. If some are shorter, some are longer. You're just going to put two strokes between your 12 and 3 and your 12 and 9. Two strokes. Two strokes. Okay. Now, some of my daisies are complete daisies and some of them are half daisies. If we're going to do a complete daisy, then I'm going to turn my piece and I'm going to put my stroke in at six o'clock. And I'm just going to repeat everything I just did. 
You're going to put a stroke, two strokes in between and two strokes in between. Now, say you're painting along and maybe you don't have enough room to put two strokes in. It's okay, just put one, okay? So this is a complete daisy. Remember, you start at 12, nine, and three. You put two strokes in between each using the side of your brush, not the flat of your brush, because that'll get your stroke a little bit skinnier. If you want a complete daisy, you'll do a stroke at six o'clock and put two in between, and that will give you a complete round daisy. Now, if you want a half daisy, which I have several of those on here, what you do is you take your brush and you're gonna do two strokes sideways at the bottom of that circle. And that's gonna close up that daisy to give you a half daisy. So for a half daisy, two strokes sideways. So go ahead and start putting your strokes in on your pot using white paint, not pink, with your number two filbert and determine which direction you want your flower to go. And then that's how you would start. So for instance, if I'm gonna make this one a complete daisy, I think I wanna have it go straight on. So I'm gonna put on my 12 o'clock, I'm gonna put on my nine o'clock and I'm gonna put on my three o'clock. Then I'm gonna put two strokes in between See how I'm starting to go over my stems now? Then I'll flip my piece because I do much better painting upside down. I'm going to put my six o'clock on. Now this one, it's kind of a little, not quite enough space to get to, so it's going to be okay. I'm just going to put one in there. And then over here, I'll put two. So if you have a space that you can't get two in, don't panic. Just put one in and see how nice that looks. I'm gonna make this one a half daisy. So again, and I'm turning it a little bit to the side. So I'm gonna do my 12 o'clock, my three o'clock, my nine o'clock. Fill in with two in between. Again, I do two strokes and I reload my brush because I like texture. Now this is gonna be a half daisy. So we're gonna take our brush and we're gonna go sideways with it. And that's gonna give us a half daisy. So work on your daisies, get them all in, determine if you want halves and holes, depending on where they're landing on your piece. Remember, it's okay if your strokes over go over the top of another flower. It makes it look a little bit more realistic instead of polka dotty. So it's okay that things go over. I'm gonna make this one a full daisy. So it gives me a little bit. <coughs> so see how our garden's coming? On my little candle cup here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, I can use the same brush just less amount of pressure. Okay. 
I think this one in front, I'll do a complete daisy. Change it up a little bit here. So I bet a bunch of you are going to go out tonight or tomorrow and buy yogurt. Everybody's going to have yogurt for lunch tomorrow so they can make these. And this would be such a cute little piece to give to mom. Just imagine you put a tea light or a candle in it and it glistens. Absolutely beautiful little piece to give her. And it doesn't cost much, so you're not spending a lot of money. And you're giving something to her out of love that you painted. I'll give you a couple minutes to work on that. And we're gonna have to let these dry um, before we can actually do our centers because those little sit downs um, have a little texture to them. And if we try to shade them, um, they will run and smudge. So we'll just let them dry and um, Hopefully you're all having fun so far. Our garden's coming. It's growing. It's getting in bloom. They're starting to bloom. The next color we're going to be using is going to be cobalt blue and medium blue. So go ahead. Um, and get those two colors out onto your palette. So any medium blue and dark blue will work. Doesn't have to be these exact colors. When you're painting this piece, you can use any colors you want. There is no right or wrong. These are just the colors that um, folk art makes. I paint a lot in enamels and enamels is a very, very small palette. So I always have to figure out a way to use their colors or mix their colors to get the effect that I'm trying to achieve. One other thing that I want to tell you about your daisies that I just saw here that I didn't put on mine yet are there are some little buds. So while you're painting those um, strokes on, um, when you paint a daisy bud, you're just going to pull three little strokes. So I'm going to put one right here three little strokes, um, just decide where you might want them to go. Maybe another one down in here. So you can put those on at the same time you're painting your, um, and we'll just have to let those dry before we can finish those. And once you I get, mean, you just you just got the yogurt jars in the grocery store, didn't you? You didn't have to order them online. No, no, no. Yeah, they're right right where the yogurt is on the shelf where you buy all the, all the yogurts. Right. So what's really interesting is some people are saying that there's actually lids for the jars that's being sold on Amazon. And I really, mm -hmm. they said they're wooden ones, and so we'll have to check that out. Yeah, then that way you can use it to store something in. I just like it because I think it's going to be the best votive. It's so sheer and, and dainty. And when you put that light in or that candle in, it is just going to glisten beautifully. I'm going leaving tomorrow to go do a Mother's Day boutique. My first boutique in Southern California that has opened up. I'm so glad to be back to work. And I'm going to go out. I have a collection of these because I keep buying them and my husband's eating them. So I'm going to go out and make some of these to try to sell at my little boutique this weekend. OK, 
Okay, what we're going to do now is we need to get some blue. We need to add a little blue to this, get a little bit of color. So you're going to be using your filbert brush. You're going to load into your medium blue and you're going to pick up your cobalt blue. So load in the medium, tip in the cobalt. You might have to, if the cobalt's too dark, you might have to tap on your palette a few times just to get that cobalt off. We are gonna do four or five petal little blossom flowers. You can do twos like you're doing buds, you can do threes, you can do four. There's no right or wrong. So what you're gonna do is you're going to come in and you're gonna take your filbert and you're just gonna set down. I tend to put five petals and I pull from the outside in. I do not pull from the inside out. I want the fat of the flower to be on the outside. So you'll pull from the outside in and you can do five petals, you can do four petals, you can do a couple little buds. Now you're gonna determine where these go depending on the space that you have on your pot. So in my case, when you look at my pot here, I have space in here, down in here, over in here, maybe even a little up in here. You don't want to get too crazy with it because you got to remember, we're going to be adding leaves in here too. So don't do too many, but go ahead, load in the medium blue, tip in the dark blue. Now, if you're heavy handed, turn that brush on its side. Do not use the flat of the brush. If you're light handed, you can use the flat of the brush. And you're just going to add these little flowers, different values, wherever you think you might want them. Again, don't get them too heavy because we've got to put leaves in here. These little flowers are going to have some centers in them. Um, they're also, um, they're just going to have some little yellow centers, which we'll be putting that in. Um, our Queen Anne's lace is done. Our lilacs are done. Our roses are done. Our daisies are almost done. We just need to shade our centers. And we should be putting on blue flowers now, and they're almost done. Then all we have left are leaves and our bumblebees. We're almost done, We're almost there. Once you're done putting those flowers on, you're going to get out berry wine, which is kind of a maroon, um, black cherry, um, burgundy color. So anything like that will work. And you need a small flat brush. You could also use your filbert to do it. Just flatten that brush out. And we're going to add a shadow at the bottom of our flowers. And I did not get a little brush out. So let's see what I can find here. Oh, 
Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to side low with this little brush. I use a four normally, but if you don't have a four, you can use a six. You can even use your filbert brush and flatten it out. So what you do is you take your brush and you tip in just into the corner of the paint. So you only have a quarter of paint onto your brush. Then on your palette, you're going to blend back and forth at the same spot, kind of blending that paint off. So it's going from darkest to lightest to water. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your daisies and you're going to be shading the bottom of your center. So the darkest color is down and the water is up. So we're floating or shading of color the bottom of those daisies. We're just going to add a little bit of color to the bottom. And your daisies are done. See how quick and easy that was? Okay, once you get all that done, remember nothing hangs in midair. Everything should have a stem. Now, the little blue flowers, I wouldn't worry about putting a stem on because we're gonna be putting leaves around them and you're not gonna see. But I think the daisies need to have a stem. So take your liner brush, any of your greens, just pull a stem coming down to the bottom. So it looks like there's something connected. Now, on your little um, daisy buds, what you wanna do here is you wanna connect a stem so it looks like they're coming down. And then you're gonna add a calyx. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your liner brush and you're gonna come up the left side and add a little calyx there and up the right side and a little one in the middle. And that makes it look like it's a closed in daisy. So make sure that you add stems off your daisies because they're pretty big flowers. They should have some kind of stem coming to the bottom of the pot. Don't worry about the blue flowers. The blue flowers are going to have a lot of leaves around them. So you don't really need to do all that work. Then on your little buds for your daisies, make sure that you paint in a little calyx on each side also. We need to get our bumblebee base coated in next. We're only going to do the one on the bottom of the pot, not on the rim of the pot, because you're going to have to base coat if you choose color of your choice, um, the rim. Mine is the soft apple, but you can pick whatever color you like. So we're just going to do the one and then you'll just repeat once you're um, now, if you feel like you need to put your pattern on, you can, um, if you think you can freehand it, he just has a pointy, bottom half and a round body so you can paint a circle and then kind of a pointed section like that and then you're going to fill that in with yellow again this will probably take two coats so go ahead and get it base coated in and then we'll go back to our flowers and finish them. We only have a few more things left on the flowers.
His wings are also base coated in with white. So what I do is I just take my liner brush and I draw my wings on first from his body. So where his body is, I'll take and I will draw them in. And then once I get the shape in, I will base coat the white in. Remember, he's going to have a head right here. So I've got them drawn in, and then I will base coat them in. Again, this will take two coats too, so get it on. Once you get your um, bumblebee base coated in, the next thing we have to do on the pot is we need to add leaves everywhere. Now you're going to be using your filbert brush and you're going to be using thicket and your cut grass. You can use your apple green if you have fresh foliage, anything that you want to um, paint your leaves in. I'm going to put a little squirt of this brighter green on here that I have sitting on my table just because I like I like my leaves to have a little bit more brightness to them. So use any values of your greens. Okay, now one thing about painting leaves. When you paint the leaves, the leaves should not be touching the stems that you've painted on. Okay. They don't, it looks very flat if you do that. So when you paint your leaves, I want you to put your leaves on so they are not touching your stems. We will connect stems to our leaves um, on our leaves to our stems when we're all done. So just load into the different colors and come in and add leaves. You're kind of just going to have them out there hanging in midair. Have leaves wherever you need them. Different values. I always put leaves at the base of my lilacs. You can even go up onto your lilac. I always have leaves at my daisies. I try on your roses. Wherever you have an opening, you're going to add just a little bit of leaves. You can get as crazy you want or as little as you want with this. Don't be afraid to overlap onto flowers. Remember, they look a little bit more realistic when things aren't just polka dotted on there. Big leaves, a little bit more pressure on your brush. Small leaves, not quite as much pressure. And again, if your leaves are getting too big, turn your brush on the side of its uh, the side of the brush and you'll get smaller leaves. And don't push as hard when you go to your surface. I think that looks pretty good for now. Mm -hmm. 
One thing I like about these paints is when you're painting in acrylics, the paint dries so fast, these paints don't really dry out that fast. I've been using the same palette and we've been painting now for an hour and a half and I'm still using the same paint and don't have to um, add more paint on. So I find that with these and of enamels. Enamels you can paint for a long period of time also without having to put more paint out. Don't forget to get a second coat of paint on your bumblebee, on his body and his wings. Once you get your leaves on, what you'll do next is you'll take your liner brush and um, the leaves just don't hang there. They should kind of have a stem. So you don't have to hit every one, but it does look nice if you come in and you just kind of bring it to the stem. Just add, like I said, you don't have to do every one, but it just finishes it off if you do come in and just kind of add a, a stem here and there. Doesn't make a difference if you use light or use dark, just use one of the values of your paint and add some stems. It's looking pretty good if you ask me. My garden, I wish my garden looked like this. I love to garden. I have a hummingbird garden and I love to garden and I have all kinds of flowers for the birds. And um, that was the one thing I did during my COVID time off. Other than paint, I worked in my yard a lot and got my hummingbird garden going. And I have a lot of birds, a lot of birds. Just love sitting out there and watching them. They're so fascinating. Okay, once you get those leaves on and you um, connect um, some of your stems, the, we need to put centers in our blue flowers. So with yellow and your liner brush, you're just going to come in and you're just going to tap some little dots in the middle of your blue flowers. Just some little dots. You can put a couple little dots on the buds. On your daisy buds, you can add a little yellow too, right where the calyx is. Add a little yellow right at the base of those daisy buds. And our flowers are done. We have completed every single thing on our flowers.
Okay, when you um, decide what color you want to um, do the rim of your pot, like I said, mine is done in soft apple, but you can use whatever color you want. Um, the one thing that I did do is it took me two coats of paint. So I put one coat on, it was kind of blotchy, and then I had to put a second coat on. When that is dry, you're gonna come back and you're gonna shade along the top of the rim. So just use a value darker um, and this will help it um, make it a little bit more three-dimensional also. So you're gonna base coat the rim, the color of your choice. And then I shaded. Now, when I shaded, I had to do it twice. Um, the second time really smooths it out. The other thing I had to do is I had to come in with my brush. So once I shaded around the edge, it made this very blotchy. So I came in with my paint and I just base coated that whatever I shaded with this edge at this rim right here. Okay. And that finishes that off. And then of course, when it's dry, you can add your second B up here if you choose. If you don't want it, you don't have to put it on there. You can put as many Bs on the piece as you like. Okay, so we're gonna go to our B next. The B is very, very, very simple. He has a couple black stripes. So I did it with my liner brush. I just felt I have more, more control with my liner brush. But with black paint on two sections of his body, I put a wider stripe. And you're just going to base coat this in. Like I said, I use my liner brush. You can use whatever you like. I just feel like I have a little bit more control um, with my liner brush. And then there's a black section through the middle of his body. I then put at his little tail, the little triangle, I base coated a little section down there for his little stinger. And I did line between the two body parts and along the outside of his body. Again, you might need to add a little water to do this. His wings, I added a couple little black lines inside his wings and then I lined the wings. Bees are very, very popular right now. If you're into decorating, everything is bees. If you're into decorating tear trays, everything is bees. Bee words, bee signs, bumblebees, bee mugs. You go to TJ Maxx, Marshalls, any of those places. Everything's all about the bumblebee. They're very, very, very popular right now. To do his head, what I did is I just took the handle end of my brush and I came right here, I set it down and I just twirled it until I liked the size of his head. Okay, then I lined a little bit of his antennas on
And of course, back where his stinger is, you need to have the little following lines where he's been, where he's buzzing around at. And when this black dries, if you want to give him some eyes, you can just take your liner brush and tap on two little white eyes. And he is all done. Very simple. I didn't do much with him. If you wanted to shade his body, you could come in with like a, a darker yellow and maybe shade up underneath here. But I didn't do that on mine. All I did was just paint the bees on. And we have one last thing to do once you get all that done. You're gonna to need to get out a stipple brush. And this kind of sets everything back in the pot. So with your thicket or your darkest green, whatever color you're using, we need to stipple along the bottom of the pot because that will set everything back. So you go into your paint, pounce it up and down on your palette, and you come in here and you stipple up and down, not too high, but you just stipple right along here where you've put your flowers in. And that kind of sets everything behind, and it kind of just finishes off the bottom of that pot with the dark green. Other than painting the rest of the pot, we are all done with everything. I hope that you all enjoyed it and thank you for painting with me today. So let me just go over a few more things just to remind you. When you are all done painting your flowers, you're gonna stipple dark green along the bottom of the base here. You need to paint the rim if you choose of your pot, the color of your choice, and then you'll side load across the top and then base coat the edge. When it dries, it did take me two coats. And when it dries, um, you can also add that other little bumblebee flying over here. If you are in sunny weather, I would set the piece outside in the direct sun and get it to cure faster for you. It will be to the touch here in the next half hour, but it won't be totally cured. If you're going to plant a real plant in it without a liner, I would suggest that you varnish the inside of the pot so that the water doesn't um, bleed through the pot and lift the paint. If you've painted in um, acrylics, make sure that you spray a coat of varnish over the top of the piece to finish it. Other than that, um, Happy painting, happy gardening. I hope you all enjoyed it. Does anybody have any questions before we go that we can answer? There's no more questions. We've been answering them as they go. I'm gonna come back on. And thank you so much, Tammy. Everyone has loved this. I've been getting kind of ideas as you've been painting along. I'm, I said, wouldn't this be cute painting on a watering can too? Oh, yes. You know, putting, you know, so I'm hoping that this was a lot of inspiration for all of you. There's so much you can do. Again, you can get this pattern packet with all the instructions and the line drawing at wisteriapainting.com. And um, we just love how you teach Tammy and we all get so excited when you come. And we really love, we decided that it's pronounced like the French word, we. We? We. Yeah. Oh, okay. Means, yes, in French. So I suspect that that's why they named the yogurt OUI. That would make sense, you know, because yes, it's a great yogurt. And yes, it's got an awesome container to paint. So thank you all so much. I hope you all have a wonderful Mother's Day. And we'll see you next week for Priscilla Hauser and Debbie Frische Choma. So have a great week, everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for joining me. And thanks, Debbie, for hosting me. I appreciate it.